everybody, welcome to episode 45 of the Joys of Games podcast. We're back after a week of hiatus. We went into hiding last week. Not really sure what happened. Things got busy. Schedules got mixed up. Regardless, here we are on a Wednesday night, January 25th, 2017. This is the week of Xbox, in case you forgot. I'm one of your hosts, Josh Brown. I am joined by the organic man himself, Colin Wheeler. I am organic. I'm a human. 100%. 100% organic. I wanted to uh, apologize to the listening audience on the last uh, episode I recorded. Yeah. Uh, I had a very extremely squeaky chair. Uh, I knew it was squeaky. I didn't realize how squeaky it was. Sure. And I listened to the episode. I was like, huh, I wonder how squeaky it was. And I'm like, oh, man, that's really irritating. Yeah. Uh, so just so everyone knows, I took it out back, shot it with a rifle, lit it on fire, and walked away. No, after that, then you took it to Costco and refunded it. That's right. Because they that, will accept anything back. After that, I was like, you know what? I'm going to take this back to Costco. Shout out to Costco's return policy because Ooh. I bought that chair two years ago. <laughs> and the uh, nice lady that returned it for me said, oh, you bought it two years ago. I'm like, yeah, I did. She's like, okay, here's your money back. I'm like, wow. okay. Did you cool. have a receipt for that? No. So I did just... have the box, though. That helps. Huh. Interesting. But uh, So my mother-in-law had a mattress for oh, two and a half years and she returned it to Costco for a full refund. Wow. Yeah. So wow. that's like, I don't even like, there's some Costco things like, that happen on mattresses know. that should never qualify a mattress I to be returned to a store. I really want to think about that. Some other law that's not I mean, helpful. you know, okay. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just throwing it out there, Colin. So, uh, yeah. Dead skin cells, you know, dude, come on, man. Hey, Hey, this, hey. Is not, this is not the gross cast. This is the joys cast. <laughs> uh, I'm joyful thinking of Costco's return policy. Yeah, man. Like the only thing that I, I think they have like a weird stipulation on is electronics, which makes sense because <laughs> oh, lots of that's their on. line. That's where they draw yeah. it. <laughs> well, I think it, uh, yeah. I, I think about it like chairs. There's probably like a ton of margin in those uh, mattresses, but like electronics. Yeah, but you can't so do anything much. with them after somebody slept on it for two and a half years. You're not that's flipping true. that for extra coinage. <laughs> they're, they're that's a zero some... dollar profit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a fair point. That's a fair point. I mean, at least electronics aren't getting all dirty and grody like you know a mattress would. Dude, you would be surprised the weird stuff that we've returned to Costco. Like we're just like, eh, doesn't work anymore, or eh, we don't like it anymore, and they just take it back. How many times have you actually taken stuff to Costco that wasn't actually purchased at Costco? Uh never. Okay. I've never done that. I like. I like. We've always bought it at Costco. Cool, <laughs> uh, I have done. I have returned some. Uh, some stuff to like Fred Meyer for store credit, mm, but mm. that's because I legitimately had no idea where it came from. Sure, like, we got things as gifts, and I'm like, I don't know. That's where fair. It came from so, I mean, as long as you're not like taking that cash and. You know, buying lottery tickets with it or something. Then, nope. Which actually wouldn't be that bad because then you're just giving it back to the state and improving our school systems, and you know you're doing some good there. So maybe that's what you should do. So I should spend all my money on the lottery. Got it. Yeah. Just next time, just cash out your paycheck. Yeah. Just put it straight in the lottery machine. Yeah. Just just insert and I, I would go scratch it. I, yeah. I feel like uh, you you get more bang for your buck that way. Sure. Like, if you just buy, like, a $2 lottery ticket, all you do is just check the numbers later and see if you won. And you probably didn't. At least with a scratch ticket, like a $2 scratch ticket, that's, like, a minute worth of, like, entertainment. Yeah, there's, like, that excitement of, like, oh, I have oh, I have almost oh, I have almost all the numbers, almost all the numbers. Oh, no. Oh, you get those big ones, those, like, 5 and $10 ones, like, the big crossword ones and stuff, man. That's oh, a half hour's really worth fun. of scratching. Those are really fun. Whew. I always look for those, and I haven't been able to find them lately. Yeah, they're tough. But man, oh man, you want to give the kids something to do on a on a Wednesday night when you're supposed to be podcasting? Just throw some scratch tickets down, let them go hog wild, dude. That's really scary. Like that's like an illegal party you got going on over well, there. Well, I mean, they're not cashing it in. Mm, they're they're still playing though. Unpaid labor is pretty much like uh, the worst crime. That's pretty much what children are anyway. Yeah, I mean that's the benefit of having kids. That's legitimately the only benefit. So. <laughs> Yeah, the rest is 
for the birds, as they say. Um, mm. It's good to be back, Colin. Yeah. Good to talk about some video games. It's a weird time of year. Um, not a whole lot going on in the industry, but you could you could feel that like that tension, you know, like that that anxiety starting to start uh, popping up here and there. Like things are ready in the industry to start exploding, and it's just not quite there yet. But oh god, we're so close. Yeah, it's funny that we were talking about like Madden being the kickoff for like fall games. Mm-hmm. I really feel like Resident Evil Seven is the kickoff for winter games. So I think there's just like a flood of games coming out from now to spring that it's like, yes what time of no. year is it again? <laughs> I feel like there's a a kind of a gap though between like this week and like the next big releases. So we have Resident Evil, Yakuza, yeah. Kingdom Hearts. All all yesterday, right? And then what's the next big one? Is it is it uh, Horizon? Horizon? Yeah. So I guess that's a month. Yeah. And then after that, it's just like I mean, then Switch, Switch comes out, then Mass Effect yeah. comes out, and then You're oh, done. Halo Wars is coming out uh, in February as well. Right. My goodness. Well, it's also the start of like pack season, and you know the the convention roundup yeah. is starting to go down, so. Yeah, like the news is light because it's just like people are just holding their cards to the chest because there's there's a lot happening, but right. it's not the right time to talk about it. No, I, I am curious though if Microsoft is going to be doing their own like separate Scorpio event, like unveil, kind of like hopefully better than what the PlayStation <laughs> did with their Pro, but kind of like that. I mean, they at least know not what they they know what not to do. Yeah. Right. Have Mark Cerny lull everyone to sleep with his intelligence. Oh God, he could too. Um, he is uh, he is such an interesting man. Like he is so <laughs> smart, but he's like, it's like the PS4 Pro gives you four. He's like C3PO, but like a softer spoken 3PO <laughs> and less and like less robotic a little bit and no sarcasm. Yeah, yeah, that's what he was missing. It was a little bit amazing of sarcasm. technology to utilize more pixels for NAC and NAC too. <laughs> um. Okay, quick prediction. Mm. It's kind of something that people are kind of floating out there recently. Uh, the Scorpio. Yep. Is it just an upgraded Xbox One, or do you think that's their next system? Mm, they've definitely like touted it as an upgrade to the Xbox One. I know but what they've said. Yeah, the messaging definitely could be changed. Um they're also like the specs have been have leaked too. I think Digital Foundry found specs and they said it was like 4.5 times more powerful than the Xbox One. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> That's a pretty big leap. Yeah. So they could very well say it is the next Xbox. I, I'm curious what they're going to call it. Right. Because. Like, <laughs> like, like they mess themselves up, right? Yeah. They, they I don't... completely did this to themselves. It's not a bad idea to go away from calling it an upgrade to a new system, but at the same time, I feel like people are are always crapping on Microsoft. You know, I think Microsoft has had the has had the most innovations this generation, but like people are still just giving them crap for every single thing that they do. Like, I just I want to point out, like PlayStation, while their UI is great and they're and they have some good games, like they are not being like super consumer friendly on features that people are requesting and they're taking in the ones that they do request takes like two years versus I feel like Microsoft is updating their Xbox. Colin, nobody cares about changing their name. On the, Stop it on a monthly basis. So <laughs> they deserve, they deserve more than I think that the, the, the sure. gives. I think they'll just always have the stigma of being the third company to come into the mix as far as con- like they're still like the newest, you know, um, even yeah, but been 360 stack- was like the darling system last year. I know, but like there's even still- after the red ring of death. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. I I don't know. Like they <sighs> PlayStation recovered after their eight thousand dollar PS3 system that they launched. <laughs> um, you know they they are in good Get standing. A second with job. People. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> second mortgage. Um, I I feel like Xbox is capable of turning around. I just wonder if. Even if they fully intended this next console to be 
an upgraded version a la the PS4 Pro, but like maybe slightly even more advanced than what Sony tried to do. Like even if that was their intention going into it of just making a uh, uh, middle of the road system to hold them before the next like iteration of the box. I-, I wonder if they will, or if they've had the discussions already to switch the marketing around based on the reception of the PS4 Pro and kind of like the lackluster excitement about like the incremental upgrade that that was, and be like, you know what, we just need to go all in on this next thing and just you know, uh, just go on and market it as a new system and not an upgrade to the Xbox one. Yeah. I, based I agree on what with you. Sony has done. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, I think that's what they are going to do, but I think they, they're, that's why like a separate event than E3 would be really good. So they can position it being like, Hey, you know, yeah. this is, we're not abandoning Xbox one. There's still like a tons of games that are coming out for Xbox right. one. And, Anything that you can play on Xbox One, you can also play on the Scorpio. But that, it's just kind of like that's where they're going to run into the biggest problem is like figuring how that works. I don't, I don't know. I mean, yeah, the thing about it is, is like if you look at it from like a PC perspective, you have someone that can run um, setting that like you know moderate, and then you have ones that can run an ultra. And I think that's kind of like, I think that's kind of how they're going to tout that where it's it's yeah. all the same but it's just you get better performance if you get the more expensive box i just don't think that that makes um a big impact in the console community you know i, I mean it depends like if but i, I had think built... have developers that want to develop and take advantage of all the flops of uh of, of the new xbox system right gigawatts um, like, like there's going to be people that be like, we need to push this as hard as we can, and they're gonna, and then they're gonna turn around and say, well, there's no way this game could run on Xbox One because it's just it's built for this machine. Like, that's, there's that's not true because the Xbox One is is like the infrastructure they've already described it as a PC, and PC developers are already doing that. Like, you look at Battlefield One, like if you have a, a, a Nvidia 1080, like you can run that at ultra settings and it looks amazing. And then if you have like a Nvidia like 960 or you know an older card, they can still run it and it still looks good. It looks like the on par consoles. So I don't think that would be very difficult um, to scale. I think the biggest hurdle they have, and you mentioned this before, is the marketing. Like, how do you market this thing? How do you not make it a blunder like the PS4 Pro was? Because I honestly feel like Sony just released a PS4 Pro to die. Like they're just like, okay, here you go. I don't know. <laughs> sure. It's there if you want it. <laughs> yeah, that's honestly what I feel like I, I feel like there was no like movement, no emphasis of being like, hey, everybody, you should buy this thing because it's really cool. I just even the presentation, I feel like everyone just bored out of their mind. <laughs> it's such a weird like, isn't that yeah. weird? Like they're just like, oh crap, we put so much R and D into this, we have to release it to hopefully sure. recoup some of it. Right. But, so strange. I, and I guess like that's uh, my big question is, what does Xbox do? Do they try to go the route of this is just an upgrade? This is everything will still run your Xbox. Like we're not abandoning the Xbox one, but this is the new thing that you could run your game slightly better at, or this is the new hotness and just sell your Xbox ones. Now. I am really curious. I I almost wonder if it's going to be kind of like a steam box, but a like proper console steam box, but it's like a windows 10 games Mm -hmm. box because they've already announced that they're releasing several VR headsets for windows 10. Yeah. And if they can release a VR headset that goes to the Scorpio, that's going to give the resolution of like an HTC Vive or an Oculus Rift. Like that's a pretty compelling um, sell point. Yeah. You know, especially for like someone like you that doesn't have a high end PC and and likes to play just the sim- likes to play on consoles because of the simplicity. Like if they can yeah. get that setup working on the Xbox, boom, that's perfect. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't envy their position as to. No, yeah. making that choice of of how they decide to attack this, they yeah. definitely have to be really confident because they they announced it this early. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I just feel like people would be more excited about just a brand new console and be more apt to buy that than they would be of like this is a slightly better Xbox One yeah. marketing push. Yeah, I don't think they're going to say Xbox One at all. Like, I don't think the Xbox One, like, the the One in particular is going to be yeah. a part of that at all. No. 
but I all mean, they need to get is original I mean, Xbox games, and then they can have a legacy system that plays all the Xbox stuff for the yeah. past, you know, twenty almost twenty years. That'd be cool. Hmm. They're naming though; it's going to be important. The Xbox. It's fine, <laughs> go for it. I think that'll make like, it their problem is like, like the, the new 3DS. They're obsessed with numbers, <laughs> though. Sony's played it perfectly and just gone incremental, right? Really simple, yeah. Perfect. Fantastic. Xbox is all over the board. Xbox and then 360 and then back to one. Yeah. Like, yeah. how do you continue no with sense. the numbers with it making some yeah. sense? Yeah. Like, this is the time to abandon the numbers. Like, Nintendo... They started off as just the Nintendo Entertainment System. Then it's like, oh, we're going to go Super Nintendo. And then the Nintendo 64. Oh, then we got the GameCube. And they're like, what? <laughs> What's yeah. that? And then that opened the door for them to name it anything without having to be uh, boxed into like how they were upgrading the system based wait, on wait, wait. They're They're boxed into the GameCube? <laughs> Pun intended. But you know what I mean? Yes. Like that, that, that opened oh, the doors yeah. for the Wii to happen. Um, yeah, that's such a. Ugh. What is that's gonna be the weirdest console name, right? The Wii. Sure, that's gonna be the weirdest one by far. Oh, like I can't. Let me yeah. trying to think. Is there uh, one that's weirder than that? Um, Dreamcast. No, Dreamcast is like has like a coolness to it. Like all my dreams are here. Mm. Mm. I I think the Wii is the weirdest. It's got to be. Uh, only because it's like a made up name. Yeah, like all the other ones, I feel like are named after their respective like manufacturer, like ColecoVision and Atari, sure. and yeah, the Wii is such a Wii. It's still weird. Like it's still like you know it's normal at this point because it's been around for ten years, but like it's still and just it will like always be an Think about it for a second. Forward. Yeah, and you, you just think about it, and you're like we and then they have that weird commercial with those japanese businessmen coming and being like we would like to play like that's always gonna be burned in my skull it was so perfect though because i was like oh yeah, my god really i want those guys to show up at my house right now <laughs> that's really funny i'll definitely play some tennis with those guys um yeah xbox is in a interesting position for sure um we'll see we'll see what happens uh before we get into news or anything like that colin uh, we need to, speaking of retrospective, we need to go back in the day a little bit, and we need to talk about a game that uh, people may have forgotten existed. And now that I'm seeing this, I feel like maybe we did talk about this. <laughs> maybe, I don't know, maybe we're spinning our wheels here. We're going to try it. We're going we're gonna to see what happens. If we've already talked I'll, about this, I'll throw right a curveball just so so we can, we can help ourselves. Yeah, write it and let us know. Be like, you know what? You guys are stupid. You guys already clearly did that. Also, kind of is showing you how hard it is to pull old Xbox games. It's not as easy as you would think. Yeah, this this is not a great like. There's some really solid original Xbox games, but there's not many that are like I think we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have one in my back pocket that I'm holding on to, a special for uh, a special occasion for. But oh, other than that, all right getting down there um today we're gonna to talk about viva pinata Yeah, Viva Pinata, and apologies once again, we talked about this before, but it's such a good game. Like, it's so good. <laughs> just shut up and let's talk about it again. Just let, just let me do this. Yeah, just give me um, this moment. This was, like, 
rare on its like last like before Sea of Thieves came out. This was like rare before they started doing the connect crap. Mm. And it felt like traditional rare. It had, you know, at a lot of the original rare designers there, it had Grant Kirk and Hope doing the music. Charming, charming life simulator game. It's similar to like an Animal Crossing game or a Harvest Moon type game with like strategy as well. But it's all in the base of this like beautifully colored world. And the animals, instead of being just like your standard like horse and like dog and all that stuff, they're <laughs> all pinatas. And all the pinatas are like really colorful and they're all they all look like if you were to go to store buy a pinata to break open, that's what they look like. They're rendered just like regular pinatas. Yeah. It's really, really nicely designed. And who doesn't love pinatas? Let's be real here. Yeah, they're so cute. I am actually regretful that I have never had a piñata at my birthday. Mm. I've been to I didn't have one as a child either. I I got one for my kid, but I never had one as a kid. Yeah. I feel like I would have really enjoyed that. Hmm. I mean, who doesn't like busting up and crap? Uh, okay, my only complaint about piñatas, right? This is some real talk here, Colin. Oh. Is Oh. I feel like the idea is perfect on paper, right? Um, yeah. literally and figuratively because things are made out of paper. Um, the designs are great and they're colorful and vibrant and you fill them up with all kinds of great candies and treats and whatever. Like everything is great about pinatas. Um, except for the fact of there is always a chance that that fun is going to be immediately ended with one swing. Yep. You know, like all those kids waiting in line, you know that kid at the back of the line is just like, I'm never touching this thing. I'm not even going to get a chance to swing at this thing. <laughs> you know? <clears throat> that's why you give them a plastic bat or something that's super weak. So they have to weaken the pinata. That's true. To release or, its joys. Or you get a really, really good parent who's great at, like, pulling the thing up just at the right time. But eventually you have to let him hit it. But, like, oh, man. there's always that chance it's just going to bust, right? And then you're just like, well, that's it. We're done. No yeah, I witnessed... I witnessed a, um, it was actually kind of horrifying, uh, at one of my, my son's friend's birthday party and they had a pinata and they hit the pinata off the string and it was on the ground. And the kid at the time had the baseball bat and it was just like bashing it into like a little pulp, just like, uh, Bruce Willis in Sin City where he's punching the yellow, yellow guy's face until mm. there's just nothing but mm. just yellow who's yeah, left sure that's what that kid was doing that pinata it right. was it was kind of Negan like oh well bat. oh that's a little scary yeah watch out for this kid right then he's a little nervous i want to go over here in the corner <laughs> what's that then he grew up to be negan yeah yeah um yeah. well and then there's also like the chance of like a kid hits it and a few pieces of candy drop out and like the kids in line think like, oh, it's on. And they start yep. just like running towards the candy while yep. the kid that's blindfolded is just still hacking away at the thing. Whew. Yep. There's so actually thinking about it. Like I'm actually happy. I did have a pinata <laughs> as a kid. It just seems like a really Maybe that's why we're still alive to talk about pinatas because we never had them. <laughs> Probably. Jeez. Huh. We, they really need to put a public service annou- announcement for that. I mean, it's a good thing they made a game about them. Yeah, because playing playing with them and breeding them and making homes for them is a lot more entertaining than hitting them. Although, you can hit them. If there's an animal that you don't like, just like an Animal Crossing, you yeah. can just kind of like play tricks and get them out of your town. This one, you just murder. You just sure. murder it. Well, I mean, Turns into honest. candy. Yep. They have no lives, so, you know, it's fine. <laughs> no um, souls. No souls. They don't go to Pinata Heaven. They just reincarnate as another pinata sure um <clears throat> but the the game is like when you look at it it looks like a kid's game like it just looks like something like banjo kazooie which you know it was it was designed to be a kid's game but it has like so much depth and the later levels get so more difficult so after you like build up your garden you have like a fair amount of animals these little uh like sour pinatas come in Mm -hmm. and they look like little like tiki guys that walk around and they drop poisonous candy Mm. and then the animals will eat the poisonous candy and it'll just spread around the garden you have to get like a doctor to help 
fix everything. So it's like you have to constantly manage everything from watering plants to making sure structures are okay, to making sure that all the animals are being fed, to also avoiding enemies. And also certain certain pinatas don't like other pinatas, so they'll start attacking each other, which is just adorable because you'll have like a, a little <laughs> rabbit pinata that's shooting at little top hats at at another like fox pinata who's shooting like little or actually it was a dog pinata i remember uh who shot like little dog bone candies out at each other okay and it's you just kind of want to watch it out because it's just so cute and funny um but there's just a lot going on and it's it's a really fun valix to call them chore game which i still think she should play the game because i think she would love it yeah um but just like in the music, you know, like I mentioned, Grant Kirkhope did it. He's the guy that did Banjo Kazooie. A lot of all the really good rare games. It's just like serene and like charming and fun. And there's just a lot you could do for such a childish looking concept, I guess. Sure. Hmm. But uh, yeah, I mean, Viv Pinata. I think I think I poured more out of right? Yeah, Trouble in Paradise is the superior game which is the sequel um and the right the reason why that one's superior is in the sequel you can actually invite other people online to help you garden with you which was one of the main main grabs the first one is you could you could send little pinata characters to each other kind of like letters in animal crossing sure but you could never visit each other's gardens mm-hmm. but in the second one you could right um but yeah like I think I pour more hours into this game than I think any other game on the 360. I like I played the played this one in the sequel to death, really? like to the point where like I played I played it to the point where my save broke and that's what got me to stop playing it. Wow. Yeah. <clears throat> huh. This one came out in 2006, so this was like right after the Xbox 360 launch. Sure. Yeah. And you just fell all in for it, huh? Yep, and it is backwards compatible mm-hmm. on Xbox One, and yep. it also is part of Rare Replay. Yeah, which if you do not have, them. if you do not have Rare Replay and you have an Xbox One, get what on that. Like seriously, get on that. Thirty games for thirty dollars. It's the the best compilation I've ever seen. So yeah, for the price. Also, you're a little biased because of how much you love Viva Pinata, but I love Viva Pinata so much. Please make another one, please. <laughs> I wonder if you'd like the game as much if you actually had a pinata as a kid. Ooh, I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. It's kind of scaring me. I kind of don't, you know, I don't want to be around pinatas anymore. Right. Because I feel like I feel like that kid with the baseball bat is going to come get me. You should ask your son what he feels about pin- Viva Pinata. I'm sure he likes it. I'm sure he'll like it. Maybe. But then again, Maybe. he's had a pinata for oh. a birthday. Did you know that there was a cartoon based off this game? Really? It was on Fox Kids. <laughs> no. It was really bad. I imagine I so. remember as a as a teenager I I watched it and I was like this is really bad. You sure this wasn't like a fever dream of yours? Yeah, it definitely wasn't. Um Yeah, this definitely. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. It's definitely a thing. And you definitely remember it, huh? It was the executive producer of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon. Had four kids. Huh. What went wrong uh, with that show? Uh, I, nobody knew what it was. Yeah. <laughs> Just, so, I mean, the other three like, pretty solid shows. Yeah. I don't know. I assume I never watched Yu-Gi-Oh! because that's for nerds. <laughs> I never under like I I watched Yu Gi Oh, but I never understood Yu Gi Oh. Yu Gi Oh. I always felt like he had like a bipolar disorder because he's like totally normal and happy, and then all of a sudden when he starts playing cards, his like mm-hmm. hair it's like really spiky and he gets really serious and he looks For like sure. he's like ten years older. Fun fact: I get Yu Gi Oh and Dragon Ball Z confused all the time. No, don't, don't do that. Yeah, I yeah. No, I associate no, no, those no. two as the same. You shouldn't because they're not the same. Also, far superior cartoon, Digimon. Did you watch Digimon? Yeah. Okay. For a little bit. A hot second. I like I like Digimon. It was solid. Yeah, some good you know, know they, good storytelling aspects. They brought back the original Digimon characters and the original actors uh for Digimon Try, which is like a like mini movie 
series. It's still around. Yeah, it just it, they just rebooted like they quote unquote rebooted it because I think they're in high school now. All the characters. Mm, yeah, that's how that works. So, so Agumon and like uh, Ty and Kyrie like are all back. Okay. So, so it's interested. like when Saved by the Bell kids went to high school and like some of the same cast stuck around from the middle school days and then the others were just like you know, we're just gonna bring some new ones into something like that except yeah. all the original cast are back wait for what for the digimon try oh okay the whole cast yeah gotcha also fun fact you have pinata had a nintendo ds game i did not know that it was really bad <laughs> does anybody it actually was... own that I so I tried it, mm-hmm. and it's not Viva Pinata. Like it's not the Life Sim game. It's like a series of mini games with the Viva Pinata characters from the Viva Pinata TV show. Oh, okay. So it's like yep. Viva Pinata Party. Basically, yeah. Okay. And then they tried. To, they had another one called Viva Pinata Pocket Paradise, which they sort of tried to make it. Like Viva Pinata, but it just yeah, it just was not as good. I feel like Viva Pinata not... is ripe for a comeback on mobile phones. Oh yeah, that'd be so that'd be so smart. Or That's the, the thing is like I feel like I feel like Microsoft has a lot of like really solid IPs that kind of like Nintendo that they just don't utilize. Yeah, does Microsoft own the rights to Viva Pinata? Yeah, it's a rare game. Oh, and they own Rare, right? Right, right. Hmm. Interesting. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, it'll probably be exclusive to Windows phones or something, so I oh, retract my statement. You know they would. No, nah, they wouldn't. They they've been a lot better about it. Like maybe like Microsoft when the Xbox One launched, but I feel like they've been because they have like Microsoft Word on iPad now, which is kind of insane. <sighs> That's because no one was buying surfaces. I mean, they're buying services now, but they weren't then, that's right. for sure. But, like, they, they they released that Halo game, which wasn't good, but they released the Halo game <laughs> first on Windows Phone and then on Xbox, and then it came out for Android, I think. It's called a last-ditch money-making effort, Colin. Yeah, I mean, that's... That, yeah. But, I, yeah, I, I could see them releasing this on iPad. Why not? Like, I think everybody should take a page from Nintendo and release their their release mobile games for every device yeah why not? and so, sony's apparently developing mobile games as well but my my question is are they going to release it on a xperia phone only <laughs> <laughs> no they're probably just going to do like a nathan drake go yeah that actually wasn't that bad though i enjoyed that what the nathan drake go game oh, or what was it called did the, yeah. they did huh yeah Wow, mm-hmm. I was just making a joke because of the Laura Croft Go thing. Yeah, it was like a tie-in for Uncharted 4, That's like the loot that you got. Right. That. Oh my god, I forgot about that. Yeah, it was it was all right. It wasn't as good as Laura Croft Go, but it was still for what but, it was, it was pretty fun. And it was free, so yeah, yeah. Yep. Viva pinata. Viva pinata. Happy birthday to everybody celebrating with pinatas. Um, please invite me to your birthday party if you have one. Wear um, helmets. War helmets. Be safe out there, kids. Uh, what's going on in the world of Xbox news-wise, Colin? Yeah, so not Xbox specifically. This is more third-party stuff, but it is it does pertain to Xbox. Um, Prey, which is the reboot of the really awesome first-person shooter that came out in the 360 era. Uh, their reboot is being finally got date, which is May 5th. Um, I think Bethesda saw success with Doom around the same window, so I think they're trying to release that around the same time. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you are you interested in Prey at all? I'm intrigued. Yeah, I'll check it out. We talked about it. Um, I think during E3 or some. It came That's up when, recently where there's a new trailer. Yeah, E3 was when it was announced. Yeah, yeah. It. I like the idea that you can. You can teleport to like items and like sure. solve puzzles that way. That seems yeah. really cool. But um, the first Prey was really unique because it was the first 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 person shooter 
that had like a serious amount of vert- verticality to it. Right. I don't, did you ever play the first prey? A little bit. Yeah, like you would go into like an area and there would be a shootout like many shooters have. But like what made that game so unique is there was these little pathways that you could walk around. So you could be like upside down on a ceiling shooting people on the ground and then they could start attacking you and you could start going on the walls. And like there's just a lot of like interesting ways the environment you could play around with the environment. And I, and I hope that this reboot has some of that verticality as well, because I think that's really what made that, that game unique, unique in the first place. Mm-hmm. So, but it seems a lot darker. Like, I felt like the first prey is a little campy. This one seems like almost horror, like a horror game. Yeah. But well, we'll see. Yeah. I'm, I'm intrigued. I'm keeping an eye on it. I'm not like fully sold on it yet, but Enough people out there are excited and or interested in it to make me pay attention to it, you know, more than other Bethesda games for me personally. So, gotcha. Yeah. Um, great news. We have Avalanche Software's back. Oh God, I'm so happy. Back from the dead. I am so happy too. for them. They're so good, too. Yeah. Like, their games are so great. Toy Story 3 was amazing. Yeah. That game was so good. And it was a movie tie-in game. And their Cars game were excellent excellent as well. So they're coming back to work on Cars 3, um, which is a movie tie-in game for the Pixar movie that's coming out in the summer. Uh, and Warner Brothers just bought them, basically. Like, brought them back. And most of the, like, the, the head people are back yep. at the studio. Yeah. It's it's this is really exciting news. Like yeah. and I, and I'm happy that Warner Brothers acquired them because Warner Brothers has been doing a really good job at publishing a lot of games lately and a lot mm-hmm. of quality games. So this is a perfect home for them and you know Disney doesn't have uh doesn't have stake in them anymore so they can't get rid of them. <laughs> right. So I hope to see them uh you know after this Cars games that would be really cool if, if we see a lot more like quality licensed games from them or even heck, you know, new IPs. Because they, I think they were the ones that did. Um, were they the ones that did Blur? That racing game. Mm. Is either Blur or is like a four wheeler game? Ooh, I don't remember. But you know what I'm talking about, right? Like they had there was two studios at Disney, and they were working on new IPs. And one was like a like a a four wheeling game, which was really excellent. And then one of them was Blur, which was kind of like this racing. Almost like a Mario Kart game, but like with more realistic looking cars. Right. But both those games were awesome. So. Hmm. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm just. I, I'm always excited to see people get jobs back. You know, like far too often in this industry, uh, we just see studios close, and then you know those people get absorbed into like other studios or whatnot. Um, like it, it's rare to see a studio kind of rejuvenated as it was yeah. so yeah i i appreciate it like yeah it's it's so awesome so so happy yeah and, and uh, this kind of opens up the door a little bit more for uh more disney warner brother hand in hand interaction going on oh uh, yeah yeah maybe uh you know star wars mm-hmm. or uh marvel mm-hmm. and, uh, or just disney in general Disney. Maybe really we'll see an Epic Mickey remake with better camera controls. Oh god, I would die for an Epic Mickey remake. Yeah. Reboot. I think that's a new game. Like I don't even care. Yeah, new game would be cool. I, I, I feel like there's so many good ideas there that just like suffered from bad camera. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, yeah. Great idea on paper. So you remember I was talking about those two racing games? I lied. Neither one of them were made by Avalanche. They're actually made. They were just published by Disney Interactive. Uh, okay, but Avalanche is still a great developer, so I'm excited. Yeah, sure. Uh, so Play Dead. This is this is a really like left field thing. Play Dead uh, tweeted out an image of their new game, saying, uh, "Thanks for all the positive feedback for uh, Inside. Mm-hmm. This is our new game they're working on." Yeah, I was like, "Okay, you're not waiting five years to announce your new game. Cool." <laughs> Um, the image that they te- they teased out definitely seemed like it was very similar tonally to their other two previous games. So perfect. Um, I'm on board. Absolutely. I'm hoping it's going to show up at E3 so we can see it in motion. Yeah. 
It looks really kind cool. of uh, some sort of space interaction. Yes. Yes. Down with that. Uh, lastly, I just want to touch on um, Xbox and they're getting a UI uh, revamp again. This time, kind of, sort of, bringing back the blades. What? So, when you press the home Xbox button, mm-hmm. uh, a little side menu will pop up that'll have all your, like, important stuff. Kind of like the blades were. Yeah. I still don't know how to like, use the Xbox UI. You still don't know how? No, I get lost every time I turn it on. Like, I don't remember how yeah, to it's, Netflix. Yeah, it's horrible. I love my <laughs> Xbox, but the UI is so bad. So, so bad. Um, but this this new this, this new um, update it is not only going to make the UI more stable, which they've been touting for a long time now, sure. but, like, the, the idea that you can press that home Xbox button and it has, like, take a screenshot. It has well, your friends list. It has uh, achievement progression. Like, it'll actually have... Like, let's say you're trying to get a thousand achievements in Call of Duty. It'll say, oh, you need to kill this many more people to get this one achievement to get to, you know, the thousand points or whatever. Right. So there's a lot of really cool information there. And it's it's not it, it seems like from the, the images and stuff I've seen, it seems way more intuitive than their UI of the past. So um, that's rolling out for preview members. Uh, and then um, it'll it'll go out to everyone else after they beta tested the crap out of it. So, right. So that's exciting. Yeah, definitely. Anything that makes using a gaming system easier and more friendly to the people using it is a good thing. Yeah, and people like the blades. Like as weird and obscure as they were, man, people love the blades. It's just so simple. Yeah, it worked. Like honestly, honestly, I feel like the PlayStation kind of like took a took took that in a, in a way that like they have those little folders which are basically the same thing. You just scroll and you're like, okay, here we go. Here's all my movies. Here's all my games. Here's all this. Yep. Like that's what they should have done in the first place instead of having everything all over the place. Yeah. So, what do you think of the supposed Switch UI? I don't really know. Like it looks really simple, which is fine. Mm-hmm. But it's have you heard clean. anything about it? No, 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 no. I'm just basing okay. it just off of like the the couple screenshots we've seen. Yeah, I mean, it looks really clean, and I, you know, it's, it's a touch screen. That's gonna be really cool too, because like I feel like that's the perfect like. Oh, I want to play this game. Tap it, and yeah. you're good to go. Yeah, I like it nice and clean. Like I feel like the PlayStation is nice and clean. The PS4 UI. It um, reminds me of like the, th- the 3DS UI a little bit, just like little blocks of stuff. Yeah. Um. My only hope, and Nintendo, don't do me wrong on this, is that you're able to customize, like, the theme. Yeah. You know, like, I I appreciate the clean, no pictures, no graphics, just, you know, straight up. But, like, you give me a choice to, like, buy a Splatoon theme or, like, at least make me feel like I could customize it just a little bit, done. Like, I have a Firewatch theme on my PS4 that I've been rocking since Firewatch came out just because it plays Firewatch music in the background that I'll leave mm-hmm. on for hours and just be like, God, that's an amazing song. Yeah. Um, If I were a betting man, I would say you will be able to do it. Right. Because you can... I don't know if it's going to be in the way that you want it, like the PS4, but I think you're going to be able to customize it like with stickers and stuff, like the 3DS. I guess that's fine. But, like... Just and me, the 3DS, you give you some money, do, Nintendo. The 3DS did do, uh, yes. like, full-on themes. Like, yeah. I had the Majora's Mask theme with the yeah. music. But they came, the like, several so. years after the 3DS came out. Yeah, it's true. You know, it was so late to where... I, I don't know. Like, just right out the gate, just let me customize it. Just let me give you $3 for Breath of the Wild theme, and let's call it good. You know? Yeah. I uh, I was reading somewhere that the Nintendo Switch had more pre-orders in Japan than the PlayStation 4. <laughs> uh, People are really, really excited for that. Did it have more pre-orders Japan. than the Xbox One in Japan? There are no pre-orders for <laughs> Xbox One. Nobody <laughs> bought one, buddy. There's like four. Uh, they're still sitting on a shelf somewhere. They're, they're four, and it's, it's because their parents bought them the wrong system, too, and they couldn't return it. Yeah, they're super dusty. So, um, (laughs) (laughs) poor poor Microsoft, they try so hard in Japan. They just did. They just try so hard. I mean, you got to give them credit for trying, right? Yeah. 
I mean, they, yeah. they didn't give up and abandon the country. They're just like, you know what? We're going to make you like Xbox whether you say well, that's okay or not. They also kind of canceled their only Japanese-developed game, too. So that kind of hurt them as well. Well, you know. Scalebound being canceled. So. Why develop a game for an audience that doesn't exist? <laughs> I wanted to play that game, and I exist. <laughs> I'm organic. <laughs> you are organic. I forgot we established that at the beginning. Of the I'm show. organic human. I'm not like Cable, where I'm like part robot. Hmm. God, how are they going to flesh out his story in Deadpool two? I don't know. Like, I think it's going to be the perfect contrast. The like, super like gruff, like angry person, and then the dopey, like goofy Deadpool, just like going off of him. I think but, it's just. Like, I think it's going to be so awesome. How weird are they going to make his character though? I like, don't know. Like I don't. I don't know what they're gonna do. Like we like, saw, Colossus fully made of metal throughout the entire movie of Deadpool, yeah. right? Um, yep. Like, how much are they gonna lean into like the time traveling and everything like that of Cable? Because even with like Colossus being fully metal and all of the other stuff, the movie still felt relatively grounded, in a sense. Yeah. You know. But like, I, I once you get into time travel, like all you know, all bets are off. I think it's, it's they're going to frame it just like they did in the first one, because the first one, um, the first half of the movie was him uh, basically doing his backstory of him having cancer and, and his love interest and all that stuff. I think. And then the second half was like current times where he's going to actually get revenge and getting his, you know, the girl back and all that stuff. I think with the second one, the first half, it's going to be all about cable um, and then like in his backstory. And then the second part of it, it's going to be him and cable together. Sure. Defeating some bad guy or some issue, some time traveling bandit. I don't know. Maybe I mean, I mean they've been doing old, that. Old man Logan. Oh my gosh. <laughs> looks so good. It looks incredibly good. Oh god. If if Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman never appear on screen for a X Men Deadpool type of movie the world would be shorted uh, something fantastic. Yes. I, I, just, I just need, like, a cameo. Just, I need, like, the equivalent of, like, Wolverine in Days of Future Past. No. Yeah. Um, first class? Uh, first uh, class. Yes, first class. Yeah. Where it's just, like, F, U, F off or something. Yep. yep. And they just looked at each other and like, okay, we're done here. <laughs> like, that's <laughs> all I need. Like, I just need that in a Deadpool movie. And done. He's got to be in Deadpool too, like somewhere. Like they put, they put, they put a Hugh Jackman in the first one because with the, like the People magazine, which is hilarious. <laughs> but at this point, there's so much like fan like fervor of them being together. Yeah. He's just got to be in. He has there were to. approximately 38 jokes in Deadpool about Wolverine. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> so funny. Uh... Mm. Anyway, uh, let's talk about a video game, Colin. Okay. A video game we love. A video mm. game that's not exclusive to the Xbox One, um, but definitely made its mark on the console. Uh, a video game that came out last year that's still uh, still being talked about. A lot of uh, Game of the Year awards were, were given to this particular game. You and I both played it. You and I both enjoyed it a whole lot. So I feel like it's time that we give this game a little th- the credit it deserves. We're going to talk about Doom. Oh man, yeah, I freaking love this game. You can't talk about Doom without putting in the Doom voice. I love this game. God, it's so good. So hardcore. Bro. So many bad guys to kill. So Lord. many things to rip and tear. Slayer. <laughs> Black Sabbath. <laughs> I'm I'm leaving my comfort zone here and I'm not okay with that. So, um, do uh, Yeah, man, like this I just recently beat it uh, uh about 2 weeks ago. Yeah. And I I just want to talk. I just want to gush about this game because Yeah, go for it. It's so interesting because it's 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 so my the cinematic equivalent to this would be like something like the expendables Mm -hmm. where you have all these action stars from the 80s are coming together and like ironically doing a bad movie 
and Doom is like coming back from the, you know, early 90s. And ironically, like the story is ironically being bad. Like it knows it knows what it is. Yeah. It's self-aware what it is, and it's so cheesy throughout the whole thing. But, like, the story itself is whatever, but the gameplay is just so satisfying. Yeah. So, so satisfying. Um, there, You know, there's a gameplay loop where if you're out of health or if you need ammo, you weaken an enemy, and then they start flashing, which is, like, something out of, like, the 90s, like the Konami beat em up you know, when you you play Ninja Turtles and like one of the bosses are flashing, like, oh, they're almost dead. I gotta go get him, gotta finish him off. Like Doom does that. So you see someone flashing, you walk up to him, and then you just do an execution move, which just is absolutely brutal. Mm-hmm. Um, but what surprised me about the game is is one, it's not like Call of Duty. You don't reload, you don't aim down sights on most weapons. Um, and you have an incredible amount of verticality, like the environment around you, they set it up and design it so perfectly that like, if you get stuck in a rut, you can like look up and jump onto a ledge and like try to attack someone. Um, but you feel su- like such a badass throughout the entire game until the very end. Like when you start going to, and this is full spoiler warnings, just if you haven't completed doom, turn it off now, <laughs> <laughs> no, don't turn come off. back just later. Yep. Come back later. You go down to hell. Oh, <gasps> Yeah. Gasp. Dun dun dun. And they just ramp up the difficulty. And not like they they don't ramp it up in the sense that like they give you just a bunch of really hard bad guys. They just give you a million bad guys. Sure. So you're like constantly having to change up how you want to defeat these enemies and how to play and juggling um between the different weapons with different ammo and you really the only way to get ammo um back is by using your chainsaw. So you also have to decide when to use your chainsaw to get more ammo to attack. And not to mention, uh, you also have like upgrade systems so you can upgrade your suit to have more health, more, uh, stamina. You can have, uh, you can upgrade your weapons, which is a lot of fun. Like I upgraded the double bitter shotgun all the way because I just love that game and doom. The original doom, I, I use that game gun almost exclusively. And in this one, I'll, I'll say the same. Um, Later on, when you get to the very end of the game, when you're right about to, to fight the final boss, uh, they basically turn the game into like a Quake multiplayer map. There's like uh, jumps and portals and ledges, and like there's just so much going on all at the same time. And there's just so much, uh, so much visceral stress that happens while you're playing that game because you can't even take a breath at the end. Like there's just so much going on all at the same time that like by the time you're done with the encounter, you just like exhale a big, big deep breath. Cause you're just like, Holy crap. I can't believe I did all that. And it's just like nonstop action in that game. And it's so intense. And I don't, I don't feel like shooters really have that intensity anymore. Like I haven't felt that intensity since I'm trying to think the last shooter that was, maybe like halo two halo one mm-hmm. ever since then i just feel like shooters have been very like you know enemy closet you just they come out you shoot them you go to the next room enemy closet sh- come out you shoot them this one's just like enemy comes out from every single direction and figure it out <laughs> right. um, what, what i love about it is like as much as the game scales up um difficulty wise it never feels like you're not equipped to handle what it's throwing at you. You know, like like you as a player and you as a character kind of upgrade and level up at the same perfect rate as the game is scaling in difficulty. So, like, as you start getting just, like, bombarded by thousands of, like, enemies, it, it it's overwhelming and it's intense, but it's never too overwhelming. You're always, like... Yeah, I got this. You know, like, it's going to be a battle. There is going to be bloodshed here. But I'm going to come out victorious in the end. Yeah, absolutely. Like, and I always have that feeling like, of I could be successful. It's, it's you know, going off that point, it's kind of reminds me of the Dark Souls in the, in the way that, like, you as a player feel like you're getting better at the game. 
Yes. Um, as you progress, like you're you're getting into a flow of like, OK, so I need to kill these little little guys in a certain way. OK, I need to kill the floating floating head red guys in another way. OK, oh, I have to watch out for the charging uh, Hell Knight because he's he'll take me down really quickly. So it's like you're figuring out these strategies in your head on who you need to take out first, what you can leave behind, where you need to be, like what weapons you need to use all at the same time. And it just becomes not muscle memory in the way that's mundane. It just becomes like second nature. You're like, okay, I, I know what I need to do in this situation because I've done a, a small version of this before. So, right. Amazing, amazing design. The, the, those encounters like are, are, are second to none uh, shooting encounters. And I'm so, so, so excited for the sequel that they're going to be making because they leave it and in, in a pretty, pretty brutal, uh, I wouldn't say pretty brutal, but it was like a, a um, a cliffhanger that I'm like, oh man, I really want to know what happens next, but like an, an, enough satisfying, n- enough to satisfy for like an ending of one game. So if it didn't do well, it would have been fine, but it clearly did very well, and they're definitely going to be making another one. So I cannot wait for that. Yeah, I mean, it, it shocked people. You know, it, it unfortunately had that um, that stigma going into it uh, because they didn't send out review copies early that people were writing it off before it came out of this game's going to be in trouble. Like there's, there's things that they are hiding from the press and this is not going to be what we hope it to be. So people went in with super low expectations and ready to just rail on it. And then it just came out and just, just went doom on them and was like, no, this is doom and this is exactly what you wanted from a new doom and granted the multiplayer wasn't up to par um but like honestly as much as people dislike and and almost hate the multiplayer i don't think that really affects anybody's opinion of the game itself which is incredible to have like an entire other half of the game that nobody's playing, that nobody cares about, that people adamantly don't like, to still not affect the the overall impact and and outlook of the game itself as a whole. That's crazy. Yeah, and this game, as no pun intended, has been in development hell for a long time. So sure. I'm just like shocked at how well it was all put together. Um, there's a really great documentary that Daniel Dwyer uh, of No Clip put together. It's it's about I think it's about an hour long, mm-hmm. and he goes into like basically Doom and its development. He talks to developers. It's all on YouTube for free. Um, he's doing amazing work. So anybody that's listening, go check that out. Absolutely. But what was interesting is is originally when they're developing Doom Four, it was basically people are calling it the Call of Doom, or basically it was like <laughs> Call of Duty. But you're like in it's basically like a not an open world, but like open environment sort of. Uh And like these demon creature things are attacking cities and you're just like the doom guy in with an army of people killing demons. And like I saw footage of it and it looked pretty like far along and they just said, nope, it sucks. We're getting rid of this. Yeah. And then they rebooted it into this just amazing love letter to the 90s doom game. So. I, I I cannot praise this game enough. This is this is one of my top games of the year for sure. So right, a blast here that is incredible. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just just incredible the way. I mean, it, it it's just one of those games that reminds you that not every game has to be super emotional and has to be an amazing story and be super deep in its meaning. It could just be dumb fun you know Mm -hmm. and that works sometimes sometimes you just need to shut your brain off a little bit and just play a video game because it's fun to play a video game not trying to get any life lesson out of it not trying to really accomplish anything or make yourself a better person in any way shape or form or you know um, have some sort of connection to anything sometimes you just need to just shut it down pick up a controller and just blow up as many demon enemies that you possibly can. What more can you ask for? I, I don't know. I honestly don't know. Yep. You know? Yep. So good. So good. Good job, dude. Um, Colin. 
Yes. Do you want to talk about upcoming games that people may care about? Upcoming games. Well, watching you stream for a little bit. It's not an upcoming game. It's a game that's out. Sure. Watching you stream for a little bit. I was scared for you <laughs> and your life. But I was also scared for me because I was scared. Yeah. Of you playing Resident Evil 7. Oof. Um, that is on Xbox. Uh, it is getting pretty good reviews. Mm-hmm. Um, people are saying it is, is, is a a great comeback to a series. So I, I recommend anybody go out there and buy that for sure. My only, and I'll, I'll talk about it more another time, but my only real question about the whole thing is why they decided to continue the the sequential order of like the naming of the game like why they had to put in a seven like i feel like they could have just come out with just resident evil colon biohazard and people would have been like okay sure you know two things one i think it's going to sell better because it has a seven <laughs> and two uh from my understanding there is a significant like tie-in at some point like I've listened to a couple of podcasts and they've talked about this, so apparently sure. there is some kind of tie into the well, previous game. All right. Well, even so, like I think the seven just scares people because six was so not what people wanted. But then again, yeah, I don't I know. Mean, uh, they've done pretty good marketing it to be something completely different, so maybe it doesn't matter either way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, beyond that, uh, Halo Wars 2 is coming out, um, and I think we'll be back on our Xbox episode by then. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm very excited about this one. Uh, it's a re- real-time strategy game in the Halo universe. I haven't played a real-time strategy game since probably Halo Wars 1, and back then it was one of the best, I think the only RTS that I played on a controller that like made sense, so hopefully they can nail that again with this one. Um, and it is an Xbox Play Anywhere title, so if you buy it digitally, you can play it on PC um, and, and your Xbox One. So right. cross play, cross save. Yes. But those are the two big Xbox games coming out. Did you have anything you wanted to add? Um, no, I mean we're kind of in this holding pattern of uh, just kind of waiting to see when third party games start trickling out. Um, you know, we're we're getting into you know. Like we said at the beginning, this the spring season, um, uh, the indie titles are going to start showing back up again. Oh, um, yeah. If Cuphead doesn't come out this year, I'm flipping tables and, and burning down <laughs> houses. So And below. What the is going on with those two games? And Tacoma. Those, oh, yeah. Those those three games, like, I've been waiting for, for a very long time. Especially Below. Below was announced during the unveil of the Xbox One. Like, it's been four years. <laughs> Cappy, what are you doing, guys? They're making making a gym is what they're doing. Yeah. Steve Gaynor, what are you doing, man? I what? saw you at the Retro Game Expo. He's busy what are you doing, doing Retro Game Expo. He's <laughs> not making games. <laughs> you should have asked him, be like, why are you here? Why are you not back home making a game? Like, why aren't you making things for me? <laughs> for me to like? You can't have any fun because I'm not having any fun. Stop talking about old games and get to work on your new one. Steve Gainer. <sighs> Crying out loud. Yeah. Um, interesting. Um, but, you know, we'll see. There, there's there's plenty of stuff to play out there. Um, by the end of the year, it's going to be a fantastic year for Xbox, I think. Um, overall, excited to know more about the Scorpio. Um yeah, uh, they have some exclusives coming out. Like third party games are going to be big as always. Um, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to a good, successful year for Xbox. They they definitely deserve it and need it. So yep, I think that's going to be a really good year. Yeah. So. Um. That being said, Colin, I think we're uh, we're about due to head out of here. Yeah, I think we should wrap it up. Yeah, just a quick reminder, everybody, download your free games. It's always free games. Check those out. Yep, yep, yep. If you're still a Games with Gold gold member, game, Xbox Live Gold member. Just just stop. You, I, it's okay. Well, I don't know, because it's I'm okay. not anymore, it's so. Okay. It's okay. 
Everything's okay. I just don't play games online, Colin. I couldn't justify it anymore. I that makes sense. Yeah. You know Although I was going to I am going to ask you uh when Splatoon 2 comes out, are you going to get the Nintendo online thing Colin. so we can play together? Colin. Come on now. Okay. That's a yes. Between Splatoon and Mario Kart and the inevitable Smash, you know I'm going to be going online with that thing. Where is Arms going to be online? You would th- think but i don't know if that would work online like the lag would have to be yeah the lag would be pretty bad like yeah i mean fighting games online work if uh, i just don't know if nintendo uh, well i mean smash worked really good but that seems like smash wii u U worked really well but smash wii did not at all that's true i just don't mm, arm seems so precise that it uh, maybe it's possible, maybe so. I don't know. Maybe that'd be cool. You know, what I really hope is online is uh, Bomberman. Mm. Those games are so fun as multiplayer. Yes. I played the crap out of Bomberman sixty four back in the day. Sure. So fair enough. Um, you know, watch. I don't know why we're talking about Nintendo again, but that's what we do. Um, <laughs> watching Arms, um, the trailer. You know what r- makes me think of. Uh, what? It makes me think that the Punch Out series is going to have a revitalization here. Well, I mean, Punch Out came back for the Wii, and it did really well in the Wii. Yeah, I know, but we haven't seen anything since then. Yeah, it's time. It's true. We need a new Punch Out. Sounds like it. Yeah. The same. Bring back my Tyson. We're good to go. <laughs> okay, maybe not. Um, maybe not make Colin, decision. Where can people yeah. find you online? Uh, they can find me on Twitter uh, at pdx underscore geek. Fantastic. What if they want to play games with you on Xbox? Um, they can add me. My gamer tag is Caboose's Hero. It's Caboose's Hero on I think every just about every online or every online gaming service. So yeah, add me on there. Sure, why not? Message me and let me know who you are before you do, because if you just add me and don't say anything, I'll never play with you. Well, that's true. Nope, never, well, never, ever. Mm, but never, ever. Well, sure? maybe, but never. Never, ever? Never say never. Never, never, ever? Hmm. Ever, 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 ever. Um, you can find me on Twitter at the noise with a Y. Um, also, be sure to follow the show on Twitter at Joys of Games. If you have an email for us, if you want to talk to us about something, you can send one over to joysofgames at gmail.com. Um, the show goes up on Toys for Games website, toysforgames.com. And if you'd like to support us and what we're doing here with this network, with this show, you could do so over on Patreon, patreon.com slash toys for games. Uh, Colin, what, what games are you going to be playing until next week? Well, I got Kingdom Hearts 2.8. And my shrink wrap. Um, I still need to play Final Fantasy XV. Mm. I still need to play Battlefield One. Mm. I still need to play Titanfall Two, mm. et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Oh, and Abzu. I still need to play that. Okay, do that. That's two hours. Just get it. Done. Yeah, I know. I know. I keep starting, and then something happens where I'm distracted, and I feel like it's a game that I just need to go all in with yeah. headphones on and just like just get it done. Do chill. it tonight. No, I gotta go to bed. You. <sighs> Bedtime. You're the worst. Okay, so of all those <laughs> games that you have to play, I'm asking you what games are you actually going to be actively playing until next week? You know what's funny? What? Out of all those games, probably none of them, I'll be actually be playing Wind Waker <laughs> because <laughs> uh, Hayden and I, my son, uh, are we've been playing the Zelda games on Wii U because we're super stoked for breath of the wild. So we just finished Twilight princess. Sure. Um, and now he, he got about halfway through wind waker and now we're, he's at the point where, um, he has to get the triforce pieces. Okay. So he is confused what to do. So I told him I would help him with that. Sure. So I'll definitely be playing that probably to completion. Um, just because after you get the triforce pieces, it's like smooth sailing. Eh, eh? <laughs> See what you did there. From there, yeah, uh, yeah. But if if I have any extra time between homework and and house stuff, I'll I'll want to play some Kingdom Hearts because I love that series. There we go. 
Go back to the classics, right? Yep. I like it. Um, what, what are you going to be playing? Oh, I'm going to be playing a whole lot more Resident Evil in VR. Oh, man. Rest in peace. Yeah, Rest in peace, the noise. I barely made it through last night. Woo, boy. Yeah, I uh, I watched you, and it was, I didn't like it. Yeah, it's terrifying. Uncomfortable. Um, uncomfortable. Especially you being like, I really don't want to go here. I don't want to go in here. I don't want to go here. I'm like, I don't want you to go in there either. No, but it's like... I can't imagine what it looks like on the TV, but in VR, and I'll talk about this a lot more at another time, on another show probably, uh, but, like, not having the ability to just, like, turn your head slightly to see, like, your wall or your lamp or your significant other sitting next to you or, like, anything that you're familiar with to, like, remind you that, like, you're playing a game and you're just sitting on your couch playing a game inside your own home that's safe, like... Not having that comfort is the most jarring, upsetting thing about playing that game in VR. Because you just turn your head and you're like, I am in this hellhole and I'm going to die. Yeah. Oh, God. Nope. Oh, God I'm getting nope. goosebumps just nope. thinking about it nope. again. Nope, 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 nope. But nope. I'm a glutton for nope. punishment, Colin, and I feel like it's the only way to play the game. So uh, that's yep. what I'll be playing. I'll be playing a lot of that. Um, I'm also trying to wrap up uh, lingering stuff on LEGO Dimensions before the next wave comes out. Which is February. Oh, 10th. when does. Oh, wow. What's going to be in that one? Uh, that would be the Lego Batman um, story oh, pack. Oh, yeah, story pack. That's right. Yeah. Yep. So. Comes out the same day as the movie. Correct. So I want to wrap up Fantastic Beasts and get through the Sonic um, level pack. Uh, just, just tidying that up before, you know, the new stuff comes out. Um, I've been playing a bunch of little indie games, too. Um, Overwatch. Val and I started Overwatch. Not Overwatch. Overcooked. <laughs> I was like, that's a little indie game. <laughs> <laughs> well, this little indie game you may have heard of called Overwatch. I don't, I don't know if you've even heard of it. Just Never heard of that one. A little darling. Um, no, Overcooked. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Have you guys killed each other yet? Uh, we've barely, barely got into it. Like, surface level. But it's immediately... I, I know which direction it's going to go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so. Sharon and I played Portal co-op together, and I've we've never yelled at each other more than playing that oh, game God. together. So That's... Overcooked just makes me nervous. Yeah. At least with, like, Overcooked, everything's, like, on the same screen. So, like, your movement isn't impeded by the other person. Whereas, like, yeah. playing Portal co-op, like, you can't advance unless the other person is doing what they're supposed to do. And I can see how frustrating <laughs> that would be. Oh, so bad. Oh, God. Horrible yeah. memories. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, uh, it's going to be a, a busy week of gaming. I've, I've, I've started to carve out more time in my life for games. I feel like that's something – that's like a 2017 New Year's resolution of like, you know what? I need to play more games, more games than I already do because I just don't feel like I'm giving enough time to this hobby of mine that I love so much, so – trying to do good, that but you know game. like you on the other hand you're like trying to move and like you're doing important things with life so like you have every excuse in the world not to be playing games me all yep. i do is podcast so <laughs> at least temporarily and half of my uh, podcasts well, are about video games so that's weird crossing my fingers uh we're in there by completely done by the beginning of march so yes. um at that point, I'll have a lot more time to game. I'm going to be doing a lot more streams, some YouTube sure. videos, some fun stuff. So yeah. I, I'm I'm looking forward to being done with moving. As you should. Um, well, Colin, it's been a fun show, my friend. Oh, yeah. We'll see you next Thanks week. Thanks for having me. Next week? Yeah, next week. Okay. Maybe around the same day and time? Maybe. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Stay safe out there. Yeah, stay thirsty, my friend. <laughs> mm, I think that's copyright infringement. Uh, just bleep it out. <laughs> uh, We're doing it live. Do it? No. Um, <laughs> hope everybody out there has a great week. Uh, play some video games. Get lost in them. Enjoy them. Good night. Good night. Mm-hmm.